Gordon Aikman is dying. Motor neuron disease is shutting down his body. In six months' time, I'll be in a wheelchair. I'd probably be talking to you through a computer. In a year, I'll be dead. But Gordon's not giving in without a fight. The most important thing is finding a cure. Demanding better care. Raising cash to help find a cure. One. For the past year, we followed him from the depths of despair. I was trapped for five hours, lying on the floor in just absolute agony, thinking I was going to die. To the heights of delight. It is my pleasure to declare you married and you may kiss. It's an inspiring story. This is the fight of Gordon's life. This is Gordon Aikman before he got ill. Young, fit and fighting to keep Scotland in the UK as research director with the Better Together campaign. With less than a year to the referendum, he hasn't got time to be unwell. But he can't ignore the signs that something is far wrong. The first thing I noticed was, it was my hands. I wasn't able to do the buttons on my shirt. I was struggling with cutlery, typing, tying my shoelaces. Very simple, very ordinary, everyday things. And I just thought, I need to get this checked out. After months of tests, Gordon's doctor gives him a devastating diagnosis. You know, I remember sitting opposite my neurologist telling me I think I had motor neuron disease. I just didn't believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. So Gordon was in with the doctor for a good 20, 25 minutes, and then the doctor came out to get me. And I could see from the doctor's face that something very bad had happened. Um, and I went into the room and Gordon was in tears. The odds are stacked against me. Half of people die within 14 months of diagnosis. You know, that is a pretty, pretty bleak outlook uh, to be facing when some, you know, at 29. At the start of 2015, Gordon is still able to walk. With his friend Joanna, he's off to the cinema to see the film about Professor Stephen Hawking who, like Gordon, has motor neuron disease, MND. The diagnosis scene is, is very powerful. I think in many ways it was very, very similar to how I was diagnosed. It's called motor neuron disease. Life expectancy is two years. When Eddie Redmond's sitting in the bath looking at his hands um, and sort of watch, looking at them as the, sort of his fingers curl and his skin twitches, you know, I've. I've been there, I've done that, I've just stare at my own body and watch it twitch away incessantly. A singularity. A space-time singularity. It's set in a particular time period. Since then, there really hasn't been any significant progress made in yeah. any kinds of treatments or mm -hmm. understanding since, yeah. since his diagnosis. Here we are, here's Dr Davenport. Okay. There is no cure and no effective treatment, and doctors think Gordon unlike Professor Hawking, has a form of MND that will cut his life cruelly short. So if we look at your hands, mm -hmm. um, and it's very obvious that, that the loss of muscle, particularly here in this muscle here, yeah. which usually is quite a, quite a chunky muscle if you look at my hand. It attacks your brain, your spinal cord, your nerves. It leads to muscle weakness. Um, and then I'll become increasingly disabled and ultimately paralysed. A lot of the muscle has been lost here, mm -hmm. which is one of the hallmarks of motor neuron disease, of course. He's much younger uh, than most patients with this diagnosis, so that's unusual. But I think what has uh, impressed and amazed us um, is his positivity, the way that he's decided to uh, deal with this head on. Three, two, one. Gordon's fundraising frenzy begins almost straight away. The Ice Bucket Challenge is a big hit. My partner will lose the ability to walk, to eat and to talk. Go for it! Everyone seems to be soaking to support MND research. <laughs> the most important thing is finding a cure. And that can only come if we raise a serious amount of money. 
This pub quiz in Edinburgh, hosted by Gordon and his partner Joe, is one of many charity nights. In London, the Prime Minister's wife puts on a special reception for MND campaigners in number 10. By November, Gordon's fight back has raised £100,000 and is impressing the judges at the Scottish Politician of the Year Awards. It is an enormous honour to present this special judges award to Gordon Aikman. In six months time, I'll be in a wheelchair. I'd probably be talking to you through a computer. In a year, I'll be dead. So we must, we must act now. People need to run marathons and organize bake sales so I can die with dignity. Now that all needs to change. Everyone in this room can agree that. It's not difficult, and you know what? It's not even that expensive. We just need the political will. So Nicola, First Minister, please, let's get around the table and let's get this fixed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a great night. Can I begin by saying that over the course of this remarkable year, nothing and no one has inspired me more than the bravery of Gordon Aikman. <laughs> Gordon, you rightly threw down a challenge to me this evening, and I am happy to pick that challenge up, and I look forward to speaking to you more about it very, very soon. Andrea. Hi, Gordon. Can we do my legs? OK, come in. Gordon's carer is helping him at home three times a week. But he knows that's no longer enough. Yeah, like yesterday, because I don't, I don't have you guys, I don't have carers on a Tuesday. It took me, and Joe was out from, from early yesterday morning, it took me almost an hour. Andrea's getting him ready for a day out with his family in Fife. It's hard for her to watch him weaken. Yeah. It's very difficult to cope emotionally. We do get on well and we have developed a, a good relationship. Gordon is my youngest client that I've ever looked after. And yeah, it won't be easy. I am able to still drive a car and that feeling of freedom, of independence, of being able just to put your foot down and get where you want to go, when you struggle to walk from, you know, here to the end of the street, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, and it's, you know, that is, it's, it's given me a, you know, a good few months of increased independence, which I think is so, so important to people with MND. The way I think about it is, this is as healthy as I'm ever going to be. Today is my healthiest day, so I've got to get out and enjoy life while I can. I've probably seen more of my mum uh, and my family than in the last few months than ever before. I think when you're given a, you know, a terminal diagnosis, a shock like that, you reprioritise things and you you focus on different things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm back home in Fife um, every few weeks. With his mum, Gordon's come to collect a cheque from Kirkcaldy Gymnastics Club at his old school. As a youngster, Gordon was a member here. He competed for Scotland and became a coach. His sister Lorraine runs the club and organised a sponsored obstacle course to raise money for MND. So on behalf of Kirkcaldy Gymnastics Club, we'd like to hand over two cheques, one to Autism Rocks Fife and one to Gordon's Fight Back campaign for £757.30. Big wow. cheer! Thank you! Woo! You might need to hold it with me. Do you want to help God, oh, Gordon hold it, Nan? Oh, thank you, Nan. You're better than me. You're better than my hands aren't very good, you see. There we go. Okay. This is going to make a big, big difference, you know. It's all going to go on research so that they can find out what's wrong with me and other people like me. So thank you very much. This is a very kind thing and it's going to make a big difference. It's difficult and I've looked back at pictures of me doing backflips and somersaults and handstands and cartwheels and I love exercise and sport but you know and I still dream of being able to run. I can barely walk so it's 
a dream that I'm never going to realise again. One dream Gordon may be able to realise is better care for MND patients. He's taken the First Minister up on the meeting she offered him at the Politician of the Year Awards. His big ask is for the government, rather than charity, to pay for specialist MND nurses and for their number to double in Scotland to 12. Within weeks, Gordon gets a result. A patient with motor neuron disease has won his campaign for NHS funding to double the number of specialist nurses. Hi, Hi how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Can you come? Thank you. Thank Judith you. Newton is the specialist nurse supervising Gordon's care. She's helping him secure his first electric wheelchair. Oh, yeah. oh. So how do they run that? Is it is clinics that you need to go along to or is it just appointments? Yeah. Judith makes sure Gordon has the equipment, medicine and help he needs to cope with his physical decline. Mm -hmm. So then they, they match you up to the appropriate mm -hmm. chair um, and look at how you're actually going to drive and control. Mm -hmm. As one of six nurses covering the whole of Scotland, she's stretched. Being part of a bigger team should mean the 400 people living with MND get much better nursing care. Gordon has a new target. As the UK general election approaches, he's getting other politicians on side. Winning their support for a big increase in state funding for MND research. I wish I could actually run around and kick a ball just like everyone else here today. But that's not possible because of what's happening to me. Hopefully today we've raised awareness and we've you know, sent the message loud and clear that if we want to find a cure, we've got to double the amount of money we spend on research. The parties are sympathetic, but funding is allocated independently to avoid research becoming a political football. As well as raising money for MND research, Gordon's decided to donate some of his own body tissue. Lidna King, yep. one percent, and it expires 5 2016. Okay. okay. The nurses are preparing to take sample tissue, known as a punch biopsy. Just under the skin. It's important for research that they've got samples from people like me that, that have motor neuron disease. So, um, you know, I think it's something that, that I can give and hopefully can, can make a difference. This tiny piece of flesh could contain vital clues to what causes MND and what drugs might be used to treat it. Gordon's sample is being used in stem cell research at Edinburgh University. MND expert Professor Sadathan Chandran is taking Gordon to see the work his team is doing. That's the skin biopsy and over time, several weeks, from the skin biopsy outgrow other cells. They happen to be called fibroblasts and those fibroblasts over time will cover the entire cover slip like a carpet and it's those fibroblasts that you convert into the master stem cell what we're doing and what the research community is doing is to use it to discover aspects of the disease and then also use it to test and screen drugs. It's fascinating to you know, realise that skin cells of patients like me are you know, really helping in the, in the research and that's really important. Gordon's taking a break from the campaign. He's off to Washington DC with Joe, who works as a journalist. As people who like their politics, the trip wouldn't be complete without a tour of the White House. That was incredible. Wow, just absolutely incredible, yeah. We, uh, yeah, just, it's <laughs> a dream come true. It's something that really you, uh, quite surreal being in there. I don't think I would have been able to do this without Joe. Um, I can't get up and, get on with my day without Joe. Like, I just depend on him for so much. Um, he has a massive support in so many ways. It's tough, of course. It's, it's made a relationship way more intense. 
It's turbocharged in a way, isn't it? It's yeah. Because Gordon's so ill, he and Joe are determined to make the most of their time together. On their last day in Washington, Joe springs a big surprise. And then a really nice walk along the waterfront. Um, and just as the sun was setting, uh, Joe got down on one knee and proposed to me. So uh, me and Joe are getting married, which is super exciting. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just kind of topped off uh, an amazing amazing holiday. Yeah. Just as Gordon's legs and arms are getting weaker, so are the muscles that control his breathing. He uses a ventilator to top up his oxygen supply and prevent headaches. To begin with, it was horrible. Um, you know, I really hated this thing. Um, but, you know, as, uh, you know, you, it, it only took me a day or two to realise that I felt better after using it and that it was helping me in it. It wasn't my enemy, it was actually a friend. His lungs are rested in time for some friends to arrive to celebrate his engagement to Joe. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Joanna and her husband, Lawrence, like to prepare meals for Gordon. Gordon loves his food, but is no longer able to cook for himself. Yeah, Gordon, you're not coming to the MND ball on Friday though. No, I'm getting me uh, in my stomach, my stomach feeding tube thing. He's having a feeding tube surgically fitted because there may come a time when he can no longer eat. <laughs> too hungry. It's yeah. eight o'clock, well starving. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. 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 It's the day of the operation at Edinburgh's Western General Hospital. I think it's quite difficult for Gordon because although his life has got more and more difficult over the past year, this is the first time really that he's had um, any significant treatment really. But this is something that's invasive, it's something, uh, a tube that will be permanently sticking out of his stomach. And I think although he realises that it just has to be done, you just get it out of the way and, and get it over with, I think it's not, uh, it's not a particularly nice thing to go through. It's not something that he's certainly looking forward to. This is really important that I do this. It's, I'm not going to need to use it straight away, but it's an insurance policy for the future. The procedure goes well, but Gordon hasn't left himself much time to recover. Just two weeks later, it's the big day. One of my big hopes was actually that I'd be able to walk down that aisle. But I had my, my sort of leg splints on, I had my walking stick, and then I had Joe sort of propping me up um, with my other arm, and I made it down the aisle. So first, Gordon, can you take Joe's left hand? I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Gordon Lewis Aikman, solemnly and sincerely declare that I accept you, Joseph Timothy Pike, in marriage as my lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better for worse, for richer for poorer, till death us do part. Thank you, Gordon. Gordon and Joe, it is my pleasure to declare you married and you may kiss. <laughs> Weddings, you know, at the best of times, they're always very, very emotional occasions, and obviously, this one has that kind of extra emotion to it. Is there a tear in your eye? More than one, yeah, uh, at different points in the ceremony. Oh, it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm really proud to be a part of it more than anything. 
The wedding was one of the last times Gordon walked. By the summer, he's collecting an honorary degree from the University of Edinburgh in his electric wheelchair. I think dying has taught me a lot about living. Life can be short. Cherish those you care about most, many of whom are here with us today. Be true to yourself and live your own life. And, if you can, fight to make things that little bit better for those that follow. Thank you. It's now 13 months since Gordon was diagnosed with MND. The thing that I'm most scared of is losing my voice. I think that'd be incredibly difficult. So not only are you paralyzed, unable to, to move, you'd then suddenly not be able to communicate and speak and, you know, be, you know, it's such a huge part of who you are. Just try that one again. They were quick to respond to the unfolding revolution. Mr. Technology offers a solution. About the allegations. They were quick Gordon's to giving to speech samples to Edinburgh University where researchers are developing a cutting edge digital voice bank. We don't have the resources to do that. It goes into our speech synthesis software mm -hmm. um, and gets spliced up into all the individual speech sounds, gets blended with donor voices who mm -hmm. have similar kind of characteristics to your own voice, um, and then we can create the synthesized voice based on, on, the, on the recording that you made earlier. So okay. you just type in a message. Yeah. Thank you. And then press the speak okay. button at the top there. Yeah. Um. Hello, my name is Gordon. Do you think this sounds like me? Yeah, I think it does. At Holyrood, there's cross-party support for better access to voice technology and a new commitment from the government. Gordon Aikman and MND Scotland have been campaigning for those who need voice equipment to have a statutory right to it. So I can announce today that we will provide such a statutory right. That's a big change and that will affect people not just with MND, but people who lose their voice for any number of different reasons. That will have... Uh, that'll have a big impact. No matter how much his campaign succeeding, nothing can stop Gordon's body failing. He can no longer feed or wash himself, walk or drive. Andrea and her care team visit three times every day. Big change from when uh, we started here. It's tough seeing the deterioration over the last few months from being able to walk and now using the, the stand aid all the time. But it's, um, yeah, that's, uh, I get quite emotional thinking about that. It is difficult because Gordon's only a few years younger than me. Between care visits when Joe's at work, Gordon's often home alone. And without help at hand, Routine tasks can easily go wrong. So I was using my teeth to, to open the curtains and I was sort of, uh, sort of biting, biting the curtains as I was using the sort of power of my wheelchair to, to pull them open. And I basically just um, went back over this side here. My head was, was right back, just, you know, inches from the floor. This is such a crap way to die. I thought, right, I need to chuck myself on the floor. Um, so I can breathe. Then I got my feet and my legs all tangled up in the wheelchair and then that cut off the blood supply to my legs. I was trying to shout out the door because I knew the door was a little bit ajar. Nobody was coming. For five hours he'd been screaming. Screaming for help. I don't think I've ever felt more alone than I did lying on the floor, on the carpet, just that, that day. And when I got home, Gordon was he was very distressed. I was an absolute mess when they found me. I was kind of sobbing, delirious. I'd been sick. I was just an absolute mess. But I think that was a real knock to him. That was a real knock to his confidence. A real knock to any real idea of independence. It was a very difficult moment. 
After a week in hospital, Gordon's back home with Joe. What they're going through would test some relationships to destruction. So what's their secret? I think if you love someone, you love someone. Everything else is irrelevant. That's why I feel, but it's, it's easy for me to say that because, you know, I think it's harder for Joe. When you're in a situation like we are, of course it's difficult. But no challenge is insurmountable. And at the base of our friendship is love and really caring about each other. We're in this together and we've got this far. We're a team, we work well together. We've got through a lot so far, I'm sure we can, I'm sure we can cope with a few more things. At 30 years of age, Gordon has had to plan his own funeral. Today, he has appointments at an Edinburgh hospice that provides end-of-life counselling and care. It's a happy place, it's a nice place. It's, um, I come in here and I don't feel like a patient. You know, an option for me would be to come and spend my sort of final days and weeks here, but for me, I think I want to be at home. I want to be in my own space, um, surrounded by my own friends and my own family. You are heaping a huge amount of emotion, pain, pressure onto someone when you die. I think that's inevitable. I think uh, it's not quite kidding yourself that it's going to be easy for my mum to see her son pass in her own lifetime, for, my, for Joe to see his husband die. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's going to be easy for them. But I want them to know that I love them more than anything and, you know, I, they've made me who I am and I couldn't be more grateful to them. Gordon is determined to live the rest of his life to the full. Tonight he's kilted up because for the second time, he's among the nominees at the Scottish Politician of the Year Awards. And the winner of Public Campaigner of the Year is Gordon Aikman. Last year I was here in this room, I walked up those stairs over there. I walked across that stage and I stood at that podium. Um, this year, I can't take a single step unaided. I wish I could. You know, last year I ate my own dinner. This year I had to be fed by a carer. For me personally, it's been a year of big changes. But more importantly, it's been a year of big positive changes that will make a massive difference, not just to people with MND, but people right across Scotland. I just felt I had to do something. It's what I could do, it's what I could contribute, it's what I could give back, it's what... It's how I can make a difference. In December, another award. The British Empire Medal is bestowed for a campaign that's on course to raise half a million pounds. In the year ahead, Gordon and Joe hope to have their honeymoon. Gordon also wants to spend more time with his new niece, Ailey. And with Lawrence and Joanna's new baby, who's been given Gordon as his middle name in honour of an inspiring young man. <laughs>